Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaid from WallStreetMojo.com. This is the part 2 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we will learn all about vertical analysis. In vertical analysis, each of the item in the financial statements is shown as a percentage of the base figure that helps in deeper understanding of financial numbers. So in this tutorial, we have basically four objectives. Number one, learn what vertical analysis mean. Number two, its formulas and the calculation. Number three, perform vertical analysis on the Colgate case study that we have. Number four, look at its interpretation. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will need the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, then please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. So let us now start with vertical analysis. Vertical analysis was discussed in the ratio analysis framework in our last video. And uh, we noted that ratio analysis starts with company's trends. And uh, within the company's trends, vertical analysis is the first set of steps to be taken for fundamental analysis of the company. Those who are looking at this video for the first time or haven't looked at the previous set of videos, please note that we are actually working on one case study that is this Colgate case study. And uh, we are doing a ratio analysis of this company where vertical analysis is a part of that. And if you do not have access to this uh, case study, please use the description link below to get access to the same. Okay, so this actually contains all the templates where we can go ahead and uh, calculate respective ratios. And uh, the download link below also provides you with the solution set. You'll have both of them. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at what is vertical analysis. Vertical analysis is a very, very simple way of analyzing a company. Just to start with, there are two kinds of vertical analysis, one with respect to the income statement and the other one is with respect to the balance sheet. Now, as you can see the formula above income statement item divided by total sales and this is basically expressed in percentage. Let's go to the income statement of Colgate and uh, see what that actually means for us. So here basically, if you look at uh, this as an income statement for 2016, the income statement items are like this net sales, cost of sales, gross profits, selling general and administrative expenses, etc. Let's say when we divide cost of sales by net sale, that's what the formula is about vertical analysis. A vertical analysis typically mentions that you actually are doing this kind of analysis, which is a vertical analysis. How it is different from a horizontal analysis? You're not doing analysis over a period of time. You're doing it on a comparative basis for this specific year itself. So vertical analysis basically is done on uh, two types of financial statements, the income statement and the balance sheet. So as you can see on the screen, the formulas are very, very simple. Vertical analysis of the income statement is basically income statement item divided by total sales. And this is expressed in percentage. Likewise, vertical analysis of balance sheet is equal to balance sheet item divided by total assets or total liabilities. Basically, both of them are same. So you can take either of the two. And this is also expressed in percentage. The formulas are very simple. Uh, say, for example, sales is 100. And uh, let's say cost of goods sold, COGS, is uh, 50. So the vertical analysis is basically this item income statement item divided by this total sales or net sales. So that comes out to be 0.5 or 50%. This is what the vertical analysis is. So how do we do it in Colgate and what are the kind of interpretations to actually look at? We will just do that in the Colgate's case study. So I'm going to the income statement here. So here I have the income statement of Colgate and uh, let's do the vertical analysis of the same. The first question is that why it is called as vertical analysis? Uh, vertical analysis because we will be doing all the calculations with respect to percentages on a vertical basis. That means each of the line item within the net income 
let's say cost of sales is divided by net sales of 2016. Likewise, selling general and administrative expenses is divided by net sales of 2016. So the analysis is limited to this vertical column. So that's why vertical analysis. All right. So once you scroll down within this Colgate Excel sheet, you will find there is a column here from row number 30 where there is lots of space for calculation of vertical analysis. The approach here is that you need to first press equal to and the first line item is net sales and you divide the net sales by net sales itself. So this is basically just to showcase that we are going to divide each and every line item by net sales. All right. So this comes out to be 100% of course. Likewise, when you do it for cost of sales, this will be equal to COGS cost of sales is 6072 divided by 15195. So this comes out to be 40%. Okay, so let's do the same for gross margins. This is equal to 9123 divided by 15195. So I would encourage all of you to complete this exercise. Uh, and this can be done pretty quickly if you are well versed with the references. How do you use the references and how do you complete this in a go? Basically, if you remember or if you are well versed or if you basically have an idea of references, just adding this dollar sign in front of this six might do the trick. So what happens here is so I have quickly finished this vertical analysis and if you have not done yet, uh, please pause this video and uh, complete that before you continue with this. So uh, if you look at uh, the vertical analysis of the income statement, say for example for 2016, you might start noticing some interesting trends about the company. Let's observe this cost of sales. You know, cost of sales is 40% of the total sales. So it means if for every dollar hundred that is earned, $1.40 goes into the cost of sales. Likewise, you know, uh, this 60% is the gross profit margins. Selling general and administrative expenses is 33.8%. So what you get essentially by doing this kind of a analysis is a one-time snapshot about how the expenses and the revenue items actually flow within the company. Say, for example, uh, look at this. Interest expense net, 0.7%. It was in 2016 all right so if we have this data for the other years like we do in this case we will be able to understand on a comparative way how the company has actually done over the years let's let's take this for example cost of sales was 40 percent in 2016 but it has reduced a bit 39.2 in uh, 2020 so that sounds interesting and it's kind of encouraging, right? So uh, you probably have to find the reasons as to why that is so. In vertical analysis, you will not find the exact answers to your questions. You will be able to find the right kind of questions here. Cost of sales have reduced. The question will be why. You have to go within the, the 10K reports or the annual reports to identify the reasons. Likewise, look at the selling general and administrative expenses. It was 33.8% in 2016. But if you look at the most recent filings, 36.5%. So why that is so? Yeah, with this, obviously, you are getting to a point of understanding this company in a better way. That's the whole idea of doing vertical analysis. So we've done this on um, the income statement. Uh, let's complete this for the balance sheet as well. So for the balance sheet, scroll down and uh, you will find there's a space here. So here is where you will do for doing the vertical analysis of the balance sheet. Uh, we learned earlier that each and every line item, cash and cash equivalent, receivables, etc. All of them are divided by the total assets or the total liabilities. So both of them are same. As you can see here, total assets is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And the total liabilities is also 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So you can divide each and every line item by the total assets or total liabilities. It, the answer will be one and the same. For a specific year, let's say December 16, 
the cash in cash equivalent was 1315 and we divide this 1315 by 12123 uh, that's how the vertical analysis for a specific year can be done we'll do the calculations below so once you're done with this 2016 you are supposed to do it for others as well so that you can compare it across the years too so uh, let's do that please scroll down and you will find some space for the vertical analysis here of the balance sheet so basically for the cash and cash equivalent this will be 1315 divided by 1213 1213 all right so this comes out to be 10.8 percent so please note that i have already set this as a percentage style so you don't have to multiply it by 100 but if you haven't set this as a percentage, you might have to multiply that by 100 too. But in Excel, it's easier to that way that you put this as percentage. Why don't you do this um, for the remaining items as well? So meanwhile, I'll also finish the same for uh, all the other years too. So here I'm done with the vertical analysis of uh, the Coolgate's balance sheet and I would urge you to also finish the same before moving forward. Let's just look at the analysis part of it. So here we have 2016 figures, 10.8% is the cash and cash equivalent. Likewise, 11.6% is the receivables. If you look at this trend across the years, you might note something very interesting. Cash and cash equivalents for Coolgate has actually decreased over a period of time. Most recently, it is just 5.6%. You might again want to uh, go back to the 10K reports and understand and uh, rationalize why this is so. Likewise, when you look at the inventories, you know, you might find some kind of trend. 9.7% in 2016 and 10.5% in 2020. So why? Likewise, uh, receivables. So you might note that there would be something which is very interesting which you might get from just simple observations. Another interesting thing I guess would be related to goodwill. See 7.4% uh, in the year of 2016 but now it is 24%. What exactly is Colgate actually doing which is leading to a higher percentage of goodwill? Uh, maybe it is making acquisitions over a period of years. Similarly, you might note that the plant equipment and machinery, PPE, is now only 23.3%. So, you know, there are various interesting trends which you might have observed here. Similarly, when you look at this property plant and equipment here, you would note that uh, in 2016, it was 31.7%. But uh, in most recent SEC filings, it is reported as 23.3%. So it has reduced significantly. So again, the question comes as to why this is happening like that. Uh, so let's move on to the liabilities side to see some interesting observations here. Accounts payables, 9.3% in 2016, but now it is 8.8%. Maybe an interesting term would be the long-term debt. So earlier in 2016, it was 53.8%, but now it has reduced. So again, the same question as to why. So why are we writing all of this? The basic idea is to understand more about the company, its trends, and we should be able to go back to the TED Key reports and analyze certain important aspects of this financial statement. That's why I'm writing this here as why, so that I can go back later and uh, dig out the reasons. Similarly, if you look at this treasury stock, you know, this is a minus sign. So it essentially implies that Colgate has been buying back from the open market and this is leading to the negative shareholders equity uh, especially in the years of 2016 17 and 18 uh, so this is very interesting if you look at the vertical analysis and uh, it's very helpful to, to start with vertical analysis of income statement and balance sheet so let us do a quick recap of what vertical analysis was vertical analysis formula for the income statement and balance sheet is pretty much the same for income statement it's the income statement item on the top like the cost of goods sold or uh, the SGNA divided by total sales. And uh, for the vertical analysis of balance sheet, it's like the balance sheet item, cash and cash equivalents or account receivables divided by total assets or total liabilities when expressed in percentage. We did calculate the income statement uh, vertical analysis and uh, balance sheet vertical analysis and we found some interesting observations. When we did the same for vertical analysis of income statement, uh, we got the cost structures of the company, like uh, this SGNA, 
uh, 33.8% is basically the overall SGN expense. Likewise, the uh, cost of sales was 40% in 2016. Vertical analysis does help us in understanding the cost structures. Another thing where uh, vertical analysis is helpful is to identify the patterns. Like, uh, for example, here, SGN expense uh, has increased from 33.8% to 36.5%. So we are able to identify the patterns, but uh, the real answers we still are unsure of. For that, we will have to go to the annual reports and dig out the main reasons as to why that is happening. But vertical analysis does help us in identifying the right questions. Now coming to the limitations, uh, which I think I should discuss here, it doesn't help uh, in, in terms of making any decisions, right? As of now, we're just analyzing the company and we're just looking at the questions. It doesn't help us in the final decision making yet. And uh, second is that uh, all of these percentages, you know, these are kind of calculated using uh, these cost of sales and sg and expense, etc. Everything is subject to accounting shenanigans. Accounting shenanigans, but what I mean by this is that uh, if uh, management decides to change accounting policies so that they can, uh, uh, you know, represent their numbers in a better way, they can essentially do that. And uh, vertical analysis might not be able to catch that at all. For example, a depreciation policy change from uh, accelerated depreciation to, let's say, straight line method. When we are doing vertical analysis here, we won't get that story. So uh, that's that's the limitation of vertical analysis. So you should be mindful about those aspects as well. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a new topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics very regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the latest video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Thank you.